Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. Today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of this travel trailer systems uh, for a couple of friends of mine. They're completely new to the world of RVing, and so I thought I would, instead of just showing them how to use everything, I'd do a video so we can help other people that are new to RVing, show them what all the systems are, some tips and tricks, and uh, even some accessories that are really going to help them out right out of the gate and to get everything going. These are going to apply to people with motorhomes, uh, travel trailers, fifth wheels. Everything's going to be pretty darn similar, even if it's located in, in a different spot. So I think this is going to be really handy for people that are new to this whole thing. Um, I'll put a link in the description below of all the accessories that are used in this video that might help you out. And um, without further ado, why don't we jump into this and kind of explore all the systems of this travel trailer. Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullmoon Adventure Club. Today we're going to be taking you on a general walkthrough of all the systems on this travel trailer. And uh, this is a Salem. It's a Model T25. It's made by Forest River. I'm not exactly sure on the year of it, but it's a pretty good range. It's going to match up with a lot of the components that you guys have. So let's walk around and check out the systems and take a look. Okay, so we're going to start in the front here with some of the basic systems. Now, on this particular model, you do have a propane tank located in the front that's going to have this cover on it. I'll see if I can get this off the right hand here. You can see we have two standard propane tanks like you'd use for any grill. These can be upgraded to larger tanks if you end up needing more. But basically the way this, this works is you take this off. This has a little screw right here. You just basically undo this. And that's going to loosen up this bar that holds both tanks in place. So you undo this. You take that bar off and then you're just going to unscrew your propane and take that off and change it out get it refilled um, it does come with a crossover switch right here so you're going to switch from either tank so when this one runs dry you can switch it over to the full tank and that's pretty much all that there is to the propane as far as turning it on so that you have propane flowing to the unit you're just going to turn on the tank itself and turn those back off now the batteries, which is kind of the heart of the RV, are located right behind this. And this is a pretty typical spot to have them. And you can see we have two 12 volt deep cycle batteries. Go ahead and just drop these down for a second. And these are connected in parallel. What that means is the voltage is gonna stay the same, but now you can use the power from both batteries. And you can see that we have red for our positive connections in this case, and white, and uh, somebody added a black uh, for the negatives in this situation. But a parallel connection is basically when the positive of battery one is connected to the positive of battery two, and the negative from battery one is connected to the negative of battery two, and that keeps the 12 volts the same, but it adds double the capacity, which is great. And you only want to take these down to 50% before you recharge them, um, but I'll put a link up top that's going to go into more battery explanations and stuff like that. But there's the batteries. Now, it's important to note that when it comes to what the batteries can power inside your RV, these batteries will power all of the 12 volt lights. And appliances so anything that runs off 12 volts like in your car or a battery like the stereo lights the slide out is also going to be controlled by the batteries as far as the AC plugs they will not run off the batteries unless you have an inverter installed and uh, we'll talk about that in a different video this trailer does not have a inverter installed so the only way all the plugs are gonna work inside that are AC formatted the 110 plugs and your microwave and things that run off AC power uh, will only work when you have the RV plugged in to shore power. And shore power is just basically any outside electrical source with AC current. Um, this is for raising and lowering your tow ball attachment, so the entire trailer. These are typically going to have a light so you can see what's going on at night. And then you just push up and it's going to raise the uh, tow hitch ball and you can push down and it's going to lower it. If you have a manual, it's just going to have a crank and you're going to do that to raise and lower it. So the automatic uh, motorized ones are quite nice. Um, as far as this front window is concerned, this cover is to protect it from rocks and flying debris while you're driving down the road. So you want to make sure these are latched or else it could fly up and break. You want to make sure it's latched firmly in place whenever you're driving down the road. And then when you want to open it and use the window, you open it up and you can tighten those screws on the arm to hold it in place. And then you can use your window. 
Over here is your water supply. This is how you fill your onboard freshwater tank. And this is your city water connection. And this is what you do when you just want to hook up a hose at an RV park. And this is going to pressurize your system and uh, you'll have unlimited water. If you're going to be boondocking away from water connections, you're going to have to use this guy right here to uh, fill up your onboard fresh water tank, which is usually around 50 gallons or so, somewhere in there. And you need a special adapter to fill this tank. And uh, this RV doesn't have one currently, but I will put a picture up so you know what that looks like. And it screws onto the hose and fits down in here and then it fills up. And when this starts sputtering out water, uh, you know that your tank is full and you need to disconnect that and put your cap back on. City water connection does not fill your freshwater tank. It just bypasses the water pump and everything else and you rely on the pressure from whatever you're connected to to run your RV. The freshwater tank needs the water pump turned on to give you pressure. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You do have keys a lot of the time for opening up little storage bays. And if you'll notice up top, there's a little clip. Oops, let's see if I can do this one-handed. This clip comes up and holds this door in place for us. And it's usually pretty easy with two hands, but with one, there we go. And that's just gonna latch right there to keep things open for you. Now looking inside, this is our storage bay. On the other side, you have some storage as well. Uh, you wanna use a white freshwater drinking hose designed specifically for drinking water so you don't get that weird hose rubbery taste. And if you'll notice right here, connected to this hose is a pressure regulator. This is probably set between 40 and 50 pounds, or PSI, yeah. So it says right there, 40 to 50 PSI. You always wanna make sure you have one of those connected when you're gonna use a city water supply or from an RV park or when you're connecting to the water at your house because sometimes these water systems can have a much higher PSI pressure than the pipes in your RV can handle and this makes sure it never goes above 40 to 50 PSI which will keep all of your pipes safe so that's an important little gadget as well and this is basically just a stress relief attachment for the hose so when you're hooked into city water and I'll just show you real fast this would connect here and it would keep the weight of the hose from kinking it going in and that's going to cut off your water supply. So this kind of helps support it with this nice heavy duty spring and keeps your hose kind of from bending and kinking and it also kind of helps keep some tension off of that as well. So that's pretty handy but not absolutely necessary. And we'll toss that back in. And if you'll notice in here we're also going to have our water pump. Let me move this thing out of the way. And you do have a water filter here, but I don't see that it's actually connected at the moment. It, it's going to go up there. You can see they put that in. So you do have an onboard water filter, which is nice. And then a lot of these are going to be to bypass. So you can actually bypass that filter if you need to change it out or anything like that using some of these. You're also going to have a little stem coming off right here, and that's probably going to go directly into your water pump. And what you're going to use that for is when it comes time to winterize, if you want to put antifreeze, RV antifreeze for the water, you can probably attach it right here, do this valve, and that's going to make sure that it sucks uh, the coolant in through this and puts it into all of your pipes in the RV. So that's kind of what that's all about. And you're going to have your water pump located here. These run off 12, volt, or 12 volts. So um, they will work with the battery. You don't need to be plugged into shore power to use your water pump. And we'll talk about the switches and stuff a little bit later. Down below, let's talk about the stabilizers. Um, inside, you're probably going to have a crank. And that's going to fit this nut right here. And you crank it, and this is going to lower down a little scissor jack. And that keeps the RV stable. It should not be used to lift it or to change tires or anything like that. It's just supposed to touch the ground, maybe help you with leveling out a little bit. But maybe it's primarily just to keep the RV from shaking on the suspension. So don't rely on these too much for uh, leveling. You want to do that mainly with your tires and the front uh, jack to get your RV level side to side and front to back. These are mainly just for keeping your RV from shaking while you walk around. So that's what these are for. And what I like to do is just get this nut and then get a power drill. And uh, that way it's so much faster 
and you can just zip this right up and down and it'll save you a ton of time. So I'd keep a drill handy with this particular socket and uh, you'll be really glad you did. There's a little tip for you. All right, so now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna talk about uh, the power one more time. This is a 30 amp power connection. See it says right there, 30 amps at 125 volts. And you can see you have that plug inside. Now, um, this comes with a cord. Dog tire not included. Okay. And what you're gonna do is connect this into this socket. And I'll see if I can kind of do this with one hand here. It's gonna go in and then you're gonna twist it. And that's gonna lock it into place. So it's a twist lock. And then you can also screw this little washer on and that's going to make sure that it stays firmly connected and won't get yanked out. Now on the other side, this is a 30 amp RV plug and it's only going to fit into a 30 amp RV connection. Um, you can plug it into a normal household outlet but you'll need a little adapter. They're very cheap, they're five bucks. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be able to plug it into that. However, keep in mind that, so with the 30 amp plug, you'll be able to run, say your air conditioner and run some other smaller appliances, you know, TV or some lights and a fan and the radio and some other things, no problem. If you're using the 15 amp smaller plugs, um, you might barely be able to get away with running your AC or maybe not even at all. Um, but no other appliances at the same time. They're probably going to handle around 1500 watts, which is what most air conditioners use. So whenever possible, you want to use the 30 amp connector if you're going to be using the microwave and the AC, uh, stuff like that, the big draw appliances. Otherwise, you can get away with using the 15 if you're just going to be running fans and a TV and the furnace, lower draw items. So we're gonna plug this in and that's gonna give us AC power inside the RV. It's also gonna charge our batteries and it's gonna have a converter box that actually runs most of our DC appliances like the lights and stuff without draining the batteries. And so it's always great when you can be plugged in. And now the microwave's gonna work. Uh, all of the AC outlet plugs inside that look like this will, will be active in the RV. And uh, so that's great. Without an inverter, you cannot use any of your AC plugs inside unless you're plugged into shore power and now we are so we're gonna move on Now this little guy right here should not be confused with your freshwater connection because what this is is a black tank uh, Flush it's got a little spinner inside you hook up a water hose to this um, And then it sprays the inside of your black tank and gets all of the debris out of there So you don't have false readings Word of caution, you always have to have your black tank valve, which is that one, open when you do this because I have heard horror stories where they forget to open that, then they're, they're pushing all this water into their black tank, and if it gets too full, that water is gonna go right up and out of the toilet, and you're gonna have a big, big mess and tons of water in your RV. So always make sure that you have your black tank valve open and your hose, you're connected to your sewer or whatever uh, right here. I will put a link to a video that explains how to dump your black and gray tank. Up in the corner, I'll put a little card. But there's your black tank valve, and there's your gray tank valve. Black tank is for the toilet, and it's for solid debris. Um, you know, So when you're going number two and flushing toilet paper, it's going to go into your black tank. The gray tank is probably going to be for things like your sink and uh, possibly your, probably your shower. So that's just gray water. Black water, gray water. The gray water is almost always smaller because it doesn't have to handle large debris. Um, and it's always best to empty your black tank and then empty your gray tank after you closed your black tank, then open your gray tank. And that'll help flush out your hose as well. But I'll put a link up into how to do that. And always make sure to replace your cap. And also never take your cap, never leave your cap on and then open either one of these valves because you just filled this up with a nasty surprise and now you got to take off your cap and that's going to come out. So always make sure you take this cap off first, attach your hose, and then uh, dump your tanks. This does have an external shower. I don't have the key for this, but I'll put a picture up. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just a little faucet with a hot and cold attachment there so you can spray off pets or clean uh, things off on the outside. 
Here's our slide right here. And you do need power to move these in and out. Battery power is what it runs off of, so 12 volts. However, if your batteries are dead, you can probably plug this into your truck uh, because the tow cable will usually, the uh, tow light connector in the back is usually gonna supply power to the batteries in the RV. Um, or you can plug it into AC power and the converter will actually provide 12 volt current for this. This is a little storage area, but it's locked as well, so we'll have to skip that. Um, when I talk about the slides, they have this rubber seal. And at least every year or two, you should go over that with a uh, seal protectant. It's going to keep it lubricated, flexible, and make sure it doesn't dry out and crack on you. So make sure you take care of those as well. The back bumper here is sometimes used to house your black tank hose, like they've done here. That's a little tip for you. This is your cable connection. So when you're at an RV park, sometimes they'll offer cable. And you would plug into this, and then you're going to have another one inside so you can hook up your TV and watch cable and that kind of thing. Now here's your spare on the back as well. Now this is the water heater, and we're going to talk about this for a second. You just open that right up like so. Now this is a gas and electric hot water heater. So here's our electric element in the back, this little black spot right here. Very, very important never to turn that on unless your hot water, your water heater is full of water. Because if you do, it's gonna get too hot and burn out and you just broke it. So always make sure that you have this completely full of water before you turn on your electric or you will break it. It has a reset switch right here and here. So you can push those to reset it. Up here is our pressure relief valve. And you can do that to drain the water. I'll just make sure it's nice and cooled off because it could be scalding hot water. Um, but that's your pressure relief valve there. And this is your gas inlet with an automatic igniter. So this is automatic, has a sparker, and that's gonna light up your hot water heater. And it's very, very easy. Um, you always wanna make sure there's no debris in here because sometimes wasps will fly in this screen and build a little nest right here. And then that's gonna mess up your gas flow and it can be a big problem. But so that's pretty nice how that works. Always make sure you have water in there. You'll notice this hole in the bottom. That's where your anode rod goes. And they have theirs out. And this guy's seen better days. This attracts all the corrosive uh, material to it instead of the inside of the water heater. So it sacrifices itself so the inside of the tank doesn't get too corroded. And this guy's done, it's seen better days. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and replace this anode rod. It goes inside, and then you just screw that on with some Teflon tape, and uh, you're good to go. You're gonna to wanna to check those probably once a year, just to make sure that they're, uh, they don't look like this. They should look brand new. I'll put a picture up so you can kinda of see what a brand new one looks like. And that is how you uh, operate the, the water heater. We'll go inside and take a look at the switches but that's the basics of that this is a gas electric and it's all automatic which is nice now as we move around to the front you'll see we do have this nice big manual awning and i will put a link up top that'll show you a video of uh, how to operate that manual awning uh, but they're they're fairly simple and you might also have an automatic awning which just means you push a button and it comes in and out uh, using 12 volt current but this is a manual and uh, I'll put that link up top the stairs just pull out like so so with all that pretty much covered um, one more thing I want to go over here is that you do have a gas connection right here so you can put a little port like a little grill and run that off of your propane tanks in the front so that's probably what this is for it's a little attachment bar and it probably holds a table or a grill and you could hook into the gas there and you're good to go this right here is going to be the access panel for your refrigerator so if you ever need to work on it or check it out 
We're going to open that up and it'll be the back of the refrigerator. And that about covers it. Why don't we jump inside and take a look. We'll look at this other side of the storage bin here. And usually uh, this would be similar to what you would use to raise and lower your stabilizer jacks, but this isn't it. I don't know where that is, but I think that about covers it. So why don't we jump on to the inside and take a look. Okay, well, there you have it. Um, that was the exterior uh, of the travel trailer. And part two is right after this video for the interior components. It's gonna keep right on rolling, but I didn't want this to be a super huge video. Again, if you need any of those accessories, there's links down below for that. And the uh, part two on the interior of this video is coming up in just a second. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. Thank you so much for watching. If this helped you out, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. Until the next video, thanks again and happy camping.